Welcome to Soul Song Saturday. Actually, of course, it's morning where I am broadcasting from, but it might be afternoon or evening for you. Good day to you. Whenever you are watching this, if you're watching live or you're watching the playback later on, please say hello in the chat, in the comments, so that I know that you are here and I do come back to see the comments. We have a pre recorded live Soul Song Saturday today because as you are watching this, I am actually in Fort Collins, Colorado, doing a day long songwriting and song publishing retreat and learning and practicing and collaborating and all kinds of goodness. But I really wanted you to have a soul song Saturday today. So thank you again for being here. Thank you for the for practicing presence with me and engaging mindfulness with me. We come together every week to hopefully just kind of shake off uh, the week that was behind us or give thanks for it if we want to and then ground and center for the week ahead, hopefully attuning to the soul song in our own beings and carrying out embodying the fullness of life and love in this world. So that's what Soul Song Saturday is about. I'm glad that you're joining me here this Easter weekend. And every weekend, we begin Soul Song Saturday with our invocation of presence together, arriving here and now with our breath, with our gratitude, with our hearts, minds, and bodies. So if you have three candles at home that you would like to light with me, perhaps go ahead and grab those. Grab your journal if you like to reflect and journal along. And of course, if you haven't shared this yet, please share this live stream and invite some people to join you and chat with you. I love, the thing I love about live streaming is that you can share an experience with someone you know and love across the miles and enjoy together, chat together, sing together, breathe together, all of these things. So thanks again for being about it. Let's take a deep breath and light our first candle in acknowledgement of presence itself. This is the essence of life that reverberates through you and through me. This is the soul song of the universe that hums and breathes every living thing. 
And so we breathe and we release and we recognize this universal presence interconnecting us across the miles. Breathing, we light our second candle in honor of those on our hearts and minds. So this could be beings in the physical realm or the spiritual realm. If you have some people on your heart today that you love and you want to uplift, you're welcome to mention them in the chat. Just their first name, if you like, or just someone and, and what you would like us to lift up in our hearts to be present with you in that. This can also be for our spiritual team. If in your spiritual path you have guardians and guides, perhaps kind-hearted ancestors, angels, um, just take a moment to acknowledge their presence with you and give thanks. And then sort of like a big concentric circle coming in, we now come to ourselves, welcoming our whole selves here, lighting our third candle, taking a deep breath, and welcoming you, yourself, here and now. And we'll do this in three parts. So welcoming our hearts here. Maybe even take a moment to place your hand on your heart. Feel your heartbeat. You could even consider this the pulse of your soul song, you know, the tempo, the beat of your own drum that you're attuning to and getting present to so that you can walk in this world as you singing your soul song, writing your true authentic story. So noticing what's on your heart. And again, feel free to share in the comments and the chat what's on your heart this morning. Sometimes Jason and I will take note of those things and we'll lift them up together during the week on your behalf during our morning coffee time. So welcoming your heart here, noticing even how your heart space feels physically, if it's, if it's feeling light, if it's feeling contracted or constricted or tense, or if it's feeling open and expanded. And maybe go ahead and roll your shoulders back to kind of feel a little more freedom and expansion in this heart space. Breathing again, and maybe deepening that breath and elongating that exhale. Go ahead and welcome your mind and the thoughts of your mind here and now. If you're someone who journals during Soul Song Saturday, maybe jot down in your journal the thoughts that you want to reflect upon further afterwards. Or maybe jot down a thought that you would like to let go. And maybe later on you can burn that or, or throw it away as a symbol of releasing a thought that maybe isn't serving you. And then finally, on our third candle and third breath on that third candle, welcoming our whole selves here. Breathing deeply into every part of the body, letting the belly expand with this breath, letting the lungs, the sides, the diaphragm expand, letting the heart expand, and filling up. And then... And again, go ahead and fill up. Imagine breath filling you from the toes, filling the hips, widening your seat, expanding the belly and the heart space, broadening the shoulders, filling up all the way as much as you possibly can, and then exhaling out the mouth with an audible sigh if you want to. And then again, filling up, breathing in, adding a word of intention for your time here, if you like, breathing that in. And then exhaling out. Yes. So if you do have a word of intention for your time here for Soul Song Saturday, please feel free to share that in the comments. We love to hear what brings you here. And um, we really value that you 
bring yourself to this time and space. It's meaningful to us, and that you choose to spend your time with us is really meaningful. Breathing again, filling the body and noticing parts in the body that maybe need a little extra attention and breathing warmth into them. And then exhaling out anything that you want to release and let go in this time. We do honor the cycles and seasons. We are leaving winter behind us and welcoming spring, entering into spring. And so often that means um, for our inner beings. And we cycle through this all the time, really, this like sloughing off winter, uh, sloughing off maybe what needs to be pruned and let go that isn't serving us and so that we can make room and welcome the new, those cycles and seasons of life, death, and rebirth. It's a really good time, good weekend, Easter weekend to acknowledge life, death, and rebirth. And uh, sometimes it is painfully obvious what we need to let go, but it's so hard, isn't it, sometimes? Because snipping something we're used to having around can be really painful, like cutting something out of your life. And so I want to invite you to give yourself grace and give yourself time and space to to let go of what needs to be let go. And I hope that this song, maybe for someone out there, can hold the space for that kind of pain when you realize, um, yeah, when you have that realization. So this is my song, Unreleased. It's called Your Silence. Did any of it matter to you at all? Did you even miss me when I was gone? Was I a friend who made a difference? Who helped your heart sing its song? Didn't make a memories in my head. I know you weren't pretending all alone. be so Oh
That is my song, Your Silence. And thank you so much for being here for Soul Song Saturday this Easter weekend. If you haven't yet said hello in the chat, please do so. Even though this is pre-recorded live this weekend because I'm on a songwriting retreat, I love to know that you're here. Whether you're watching live or playing back, I always come back and check the comments and seek to acknowledge you as much as I possibly can. So um, please let me know you're here. Share your thoughts. And uh, please share this live video and, um, and all of that jazz. As we move into our next movement of mindfulness and practice of presence, I'd like to remind you that story dwelling is this practice that we um, are invited into uh, to bring into our lives. It's a word I made up and a practice I made up and I named one of my albums, Story Dwelling, because I believe that story is what can really cultivate compassion and empathy in our lives. And so this is about taking a, a, an inner posture of listening to ourselves and one another and noticing how when our stories encounter other stories, what happens. And then um, allowing ourselves to keep learning and growing and deepening in love and wisdom and grace. So story dwelling is cultivating courageous, compassionate curiosity for ourselves and one another. Recognizing the shaping nature of narrative. So meta narratives we dwell in, like political and religious overarching big narratives that have cosmologies and deities and, and all of these things. They could be major philosophies of life and spiritual paths. And then there are also narratives that are in you and me, right? Narratives that, uh, th thoughts that we think about ourselves, things that we believe about ourselves. They could be family narratives. Um, and just our perceptions. Um, so it is good to take time to notice what stories we dwell in and what stories dwell in us. And it also is a beautiful thing to recognize the stories that our neighbors are observing and remembering. And so one of the tools we have with Soul Song Saturday, and it is a free download for my patrons, is our Cosmic Calendar. So let's go ahead and check in with our March 2024 Cosmic Calendar today. There's a lot happening around the spring equinox, a lot happening in this month. Um, so last week, we, we recognized that our Hindu siblings in this human family um, have this beautiful festival of color and love called Holi. Our Jewish friends and family in this, in this human family uh, celebrated Purim, re remembering that story of liberation. And um, pagans celebrated Ostara. Um, Mon Maja Puja Day is Buddhist, and that is a uh, that that is today as you're watching this, and that is a remembrance of um, some miracles that happen in the Buddhist tradition around like revelation of. Um, I don't think the Buddhists call their sacred text scripture, but um, kind of some revelation of that and things like that. So um, if there's a Buddhist watching, happy Maja Puja Day. Um, I don't know if I'm, if I'm saying it correctly. Ma, ma, mm -hmm. Maja Puja Day, maybe. Um, so I have some learning to do. That's, and that's part of the cosmic calendar. It is an invitation to, to learn, to, if any of these draw on your curiosity, to kind of look up some of the background of these. I did make one mistake. The full moon was actually the same day as Holy on the, tw on the 25th. So the 31st, of course, is the Christian observance of Easter. And so um, as you can see, we are a very eclectic group here. We are interspiritual. Um, this Soul Song Saturday is very much based on practices of mindfulness and embodying the fullness of life according to your authentic path and your, your authentic story. I wanted to go ahead and offer to you a little bit of my story today because some of you know I think that I am a survivor of religious trauma. I came from a very conservative religious background that I consider very oppressive with um, some theology and ideas that I also found to be psychologically destructive and abusive. And so I have done a lot of reworking of that framework for myself, and it's been a really profound and uh, incredible healing journey to, people call it deconstruction these days, to deconstruct theology maybe that you were you grew up with that no longer serves you, that you want to release and let go, and but then what do you do with maybe something that still carries meaning and sacredness to you? 
So I wanted to share with you that uh, something that gave me a unique and beautiful and more expansive uh, kind of interpretation of the story of Christ on the cross. Uh, so as you're watching this, yesterday would be Good Friday. And um, there's a lot of meaning that people have ascribed to Good Friday and what makes it good. And then today would be Holy Saturday. And then tomorrow is Easter celebrating the resurrection of Christ. And, um, and I do love that all that this uh, sacred ancient story represents to us life, death, and rebirth, right? And um, I was told some pretty uh, interesting things about what the cross meant, and, and those things are actually really new in, the, in Christian history. They're not really very orthodox, and they don't go all the way back to original followers of Jesus. But what really brought some meaning back for me that made this relevant and powerful was learning from black liberation theologians. So I, if, if anyone here is interested in this, I recommend uh, looking into the author James Cone, who wrote the book, The Cross and the Lynching Tree. Black liberation theology takes a look at Christ on the cross and reminds us that Jesus was not white, for one thing. Jesus was a brown-skinned, Palestinian Jew who was a rabbi and a revolutionary of love. And I think the story of the cross also reminds us how threatened empire can be by the power of love, especially the power of radical revolutionary love that Jesus taught and, and demonstrated in his life. And so um, when we take a look at that, that perhaps we could look at it more like the divine in Christ became intimate with uh, the suffering imposed by state-sanctioned violence. The divine in Christ sympathizes and empathizes with the suffering that we experience um, day to day uh, and, and how we are often weighed down by so much that happens in life. Um, and all the while still caring for his mother and, um, and forgiving those who so excruciatingly harmed him. Uh, yeah, it is, it's really an astonishing account. And one of the things that I value about Good Friday um, is the opportunity to just be real about the suffering of life, to be honest about how painful aspects of life can be because so much in religion and even spiritual spirituality definitely churchy people but also yogis and others can be so much about the positive vibes and kind of this tyranny of happiness you know um, but it is so real that we must grieve that we must allow aspects things that don't serve us to die and um, and then when they do new life can emerge within us so Taking on this uh, highlighting and, and taking a look and noticing the value of the black liberation theologians and how they speak to us uh, and kind of make this even more relevant to the here and now to today, speaking of justice and liberation, um, I wanted to share with you this really powerful song called Rose Petals written by D. Wilson. You can find it um, in something called the Common Hymnal. And this is naming the names of black and brown siblings in our human family who have been uh, murdered by state-sanctioned violence. And so I want to invite you, this, is, this really is a, a deep exercise and story dwelling where we realize we encounter another story that maybe we haven't experienced, especially if we're white-bodied folks uh, watching, and certainly I am white-bodied. Um, I will never know what it is like to be a black person in America, and I, yet I want to dwell in the reality of, of this story um, and recognize the ways that I have been complicit myself in a racist system and see, look into what could I do to shift that story? What could I do to create a better, more just and liberated and loving story collectively for all of us? And I, and I think that's what, we're do, well, that's what we do together often in this Soul Song Saturday is reflecting on how can we create an authentic story with our lives, a story of love, 
and generosity? And how can we participate in creating a collective story that is one of, um, of, of recognizing grief and sorrow and then creating newness and beauty and goodness in our world, yes? So this is Rose Petals. of our 
siblings spilled on the street. They were the rose that grew out of the concrete. Rose petals, please take a deep breath. Notice any feelings arising and breathe, welcoming those feelings, noticing them and breathing. The only song that made sense to me to follow up that song is my song, How Long, for our musical apothecary movement of Soul Song Saturday. I'm just kind of continuing in this space of acknowledging the grief and sorrow of what some call in America the death culture. Ironically so, I think, because so often we don't want to look at death and we do so much to, uh, to ignore that reality of our existence. So breathing. And we will sing the song, How Long? But first reading from the Musical Apothecary Companion Booklet. This is a song of lament, drawing from the Hebrew prophets Isaiah, Amos, as well as the Gospel of Luke. I'd invite you to go deeper by looking up how they lamented injustice and longed for justice, if you'd like. You might also like to look up the story of the weeping Buddha when you find an image of this statue. Notice the posture. Lament postures can range from lying prostrate face down, the fetal position even rocking oneself, lying on your back with arms to the side and palms up in supplication or on your knees folded over the knees like the weeping Buddha. You may assume any posture that feels right for you and allows you to breathe and fill the belly with breath and exhale sharply and fully, breathing in again with deep, even, audible sighs. When you reflect on and participate in collective grief and mourning, as well as hold space for your own longing. There might even be times when you gather a group of friends, as we are now, to simply and quietly meditate on this song together when relevant to communal tragedy created by systemic injustice. And we know that that reality <clears throat> is occurring in parts of the world, even as we are here. And so we don't do this every Soul Song Saturday, but today we are practicing present presence to this. And hopefully, so then we can be about creating more justice in this world, yes? So if you know this, sing along or simply deepen into your breath.
comfort to the brokenhearted, relief to the distressed, beauty in the place of ashes, lightness for this heaviness. Oh, when will come the year of Jubilee, when all our debts will be released, when will factions dissipate and enemies make peace? that arise, noticing questions that arise, and perhaps even jotting those things down for yourself. <sighs> Thank you for being part of Soul Song Saturday. Those of you who come when you can and those of you who I get to see every week, I love your presence here. It means so much to us. And um, thank you for breathing with me. Thank you for being present to the reality of life and this human existence and all that it contains. The fullness of life is the, <clears throat> the shiz and the sorrow, you know? It's the agony and it is the death. And it also is the life. It also is the hope. It also is regeneration. It also is renewal and redemption and recovery and brand new things and bright, beautiful new things. And we can be grateful for all of it in different ways, right? When we're ready. And so I would love to hear what you are grateful for today, my friends. What are you grateful for from this week that we're leaving behind and saying goodbye to? What are you grateful for that you're looking forward to in the week ahead? Uh, what are you grateful for about this Easter weekend, perhaps? Um, or if you're observing Maja Puja Day today? Uh, yes, so grateful for you. And uh, grateful for this song. This is called In Recovery. Grateful for the hope that is in it. My friend Tony Bean uh, started to write this song and asked me to write some more lyrics for it. So I wrote the lyrics for a bunch of it. Um, but it was a really interesting concept. And I kind of think of this as an Easter song because it is this recovery and renewal of perhaps the way things were intended to be. Do any of us really know if there is a cosmic intelligent force with a design for us? I don't know if we can totally know that, but those of us who choose to or resonate with that kind of perspective, we can believe it. And uh, because shoulds were so weaponized for me in my religious upbringing, I really was hesitant to uh, be part of a song that spoke of a way that things should be. But Tony and I talked about it and reflected on it, and I realized, oh my goodness, I actually do think that there is a way things should be. I totally do. I believe that every child should have a chance to grow healthy and strong with the nourishment they need for their physical and mental development, with loving and safe homes where they 
you know, are instilled with the inner dialogue and narrative that they are worth it, that they really can pursue the things that they desire to in life. And that's good and beautiful. I really believe that, you know, there should be more justice and generosity in our world as we just kind of were talking about. Ah, and I do believe that even, even in times where it seems like evil is having its way or injustice is having its way, I do believe more and more that there is a collective consciousness that is moving towards this idea of celebrating diversity and inclusion, creating belonging for all kinds of people flattening any form of supremacy, whether it's white pseudo-supremacy or religious supremacy of any kind. Let's be about it, yes? And uh, if you have any examples of that that you want to give thanks for in the comments, we would love to hear those stories. And uh, thank you so much for sharing. comes a time when we've run out of wishes and all that we hope for is weighed down by gold if only the naked were clothed in the kisses of love Confessing that those seen as nothing are now to be told. They are the ones who inherit the blessings of wonder, the realms of wonder.
Yes, I am grateful for that. I am grateful. I do believe we are in recovery of the way it was meant to be. Dr. King said, the arc of the universe bends towards justice. May it be, and may we participate in it. May we be part of it. I hope you have some stories of maybe how you have seen or you've been able to participate in creating this more beautiful world. Our hearts knows is possible, right? Mm -hmm. So thank you for sharing your gratitudes. I am so grateful for you, friends. Thank you so much to our patrons for making this possible. Uh, no one uh, pays us to do this but you. So thank you so much for um, for fueling and energizing this, this program and all that I create through Patreon, that monthly support network and system for us, uh, that safety net for us. And thank you for those of you who are able to contribute one time. And uh, thank you for those of you who do both. Uh, there's at least one person here who does both, so that's amazing. Thank you. We really appreciate you. And, and thank you, of course, for those of you who like to check out um, the original art products that we have. Those are at my link tree, and you can just go to my Printify and get yourself a Heatherland's Musical Apothecary mug or some other fun treats uh, or, or journal to use during your Soul Song Saturday. Um, thank you all so much for your participation, for your shares, for your follows, uh, for inviting people to be a part of the movements of this music that we always hope are about love and, and creating this more beautiful world. Uh, love and authenticity and, um, and all this goodness. Thank you for making it possible. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So grateful for you. So if you'd like to learn more, just check out my website. You can also check out shows. I need to update the shows page. I have one coming up with my uh, collaborator, Marcy Smith. We're going to do a So Far show on April 6th. That's here in Denver. So if you'd like to learn more about that, just reach out and I can let you know. And uh, I think that about covers it. Um, so as we go on our way, happy Easter weekend. Um, I know that some of you observe it uh, spiritually, some of you observe it sort of more culturally, so I hope you have a really fun and meaningful weekend, uh, however you observe it and whatever it means to you. And let's go now remembering that we are made of love. Let's go remembering that we are inherently worthy of love. So being brave in our belovedness, and being courageous in our kindness because others, everyone else is also made of love and worthy inherently by virtue of existence. And, and they might need a reminder from you this week. So let's be courageous in our kindness and noticing those around us uh, who maybe could use an encouraging kind word or demonstration of care and presence and trusting that the light will find us wherever we roam. The light, um, all is not lost. Um, we have observed and take, been present to a lot that is, uh, is not good and that is not right in the world. But my friends, a lot there is a lot that is right and there's a lot of goodness that you and I can bring and breathe into this world. All is not lost. So let's, uh, let's in gratitude, celebrate that the light will find us. Feel free to dance. Feel free to snap along. All right. Follow the flow of freedom. Hold the hand.
Thank you, everyone. Much love. See you next week. Peace.